The hurdy-gurdy girls were dancing girls, or Terpsichorean artistes, as the Caribou Sentinel newspaper called them. They were brought from Germany, direct from Baden-Baden, usually via California, by an entrepreneurial saloon keeper. Barry and Adler of Barkerville's famed Fashion Saloon are credited as the first to bring hurdy-gurdy dancers to the Caribou, but this is at best a doubtful claim. Also doubtful is the suggestion that French Madame Fanny Ben Dixon was in charge of them, as no contemporary documentation links her with the dancers. In fact, James Loring of the Diller Claim fame may have been the first to bring in dancing partners for minors. In 1865, he was employing indigenous women at his Terpsichorean saloon in Camerington. In North America, the hurdy-gurdies are known primarily as dance hall girls in mining communities. The name hurdies comes from a musical instrument played with buttons and a wheel that rubs a string, creating a distinctive drone. The hurdy-gurdy and the bagpipes were the most popular instruments for dancing in the rural areas of Europe for centuries, and were particularly popular in Western Germany in the 19th century. In Barkerville, they were also accompanied by the fiddle. The hurdies first arrived on Williams Creek in the summer of 1866, dancing in their celebrated style at the Fashion Saloon and Martin Saloon. By the next summer, they were also enticing miners into Jacob Mundorf's Crystal Palace Saloon, and soon to Sterling Saloon. One dance would cost a miner one dollar. As well, the girls got a percentage of the sale of any drinks they enticed miners to buy. And enticed they did, for some miners were reported to be broke, having spent all their earnings on the hurdies. In 1866, the Caribou Sentinel ran a letter describing the hurdies. The hurdy style of dancing differs from all other schools. If you ever saw a ring of bells in motion, you have seen the exact positions these young ladies are put through during their dance. The more muscular the partner, the nearer the approximation of the lady's pedal extremities to the ceiling, and the gent who can hoist his gal the highest is considered the best dancer. The poor girls, as a general thing, earn their money very hardly. James Anderson, the bard of Caribou, wrote a song about the hurdies, sung to the tune of the popular folk song Green Grow the Rushes O, and published in the Caribou Sentinel on July 23, 1866. Last summer we had lassies here for Germany, the hurdies O, and troth I wot as I'm a Scot, they were the bonny hurdies O. Bonnie are the hurdies, oh, the German hurdy gurdies, oh, the daftest hour that e'er I spent was dancing with the hurdies, oh. Clearly, James Anderson was not one of those who wept when the hurdies left for warmer climates in the fall. There may have been a language barrier, as most of the girls were German, and some townsfolk may have questioned their morals, but that did not deter many of them from staying each fall to marry merchants and miners. Elizabeth Ebert, known as Dumpy Little Lizzie, married Edward Daughtry and moved to the Clinton area. Jeanette Cease, a German girl who married John Hauser in San Francisco, was a hurdy, as was Martha Pendela, the German wife of Italian merchant Angelo Pendela. And when the dance hall closed, Mrs. Bella Hodgkinson, Isabella Irvine, married a miner and took in laundry. The last mention of the Hurdies in the Caribou Sentinel newspaper appears in 1871. 